Hey. Hello, hey. it's your girl Kels. And I'm Lala. And we have a special guest, Miss Jolyn, not Jolene, not any of other variation that y'all try to say her name is Jolyn. We have Miss Jolyn GC in the building. Hey, Jolyn. Hey, good morning. Good morning, hey, and thank you for joining Market Bullies. Um, I'm excited. We're excited to have you too. We, yes, are, we are, you know, again, thank you for your time. Um, as y'all know, I'm Marky Bullies, y'all, my hair, disclaimer, yeah. I, took out, I took out a break thinking I was getting my yeah. hair done this week, and the appointment is next week, so I've been, I gotta talk to the side. Um, <laughs> side, side profiles. Hello. Um, as you know, I'm Marky Bullies, we, you know, keep it real on here, we talk about the market, um, mm-hmm. And if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe, share our uh, videos. Um, shout out to the YouTube page of TBD Gen Wealth. You can go to IG, follow the page, and go to Facebook and follow the page. Um, and don't just follow, please interact with us. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and definitely, definitely, if you haven't already done so, go to the Come Up series on YouTube, okay? Mm-hmm. And go watch the Wealth Witch Rules, okay, by Miss Jolyn GC. Um, we'll get into get that a little life. later. We get, yeah, we get into that later. So as you know, we do the weekly rundown. Um, we go over the indices, um, starting with the Dow Jones. This week closed up just a little bit, uh, 0.44%. The S&P closed up uh, 1.25% for the week. And then the NASDAQ closed uh, 38 five uh, percent for the week. Um, this week, the winter sectors were IT, which, which is interesting. Um, consumer discretion um, was up two point three two percent, and then materials up one point nine two percent. The sector losers were energy and communication services. Um, the unemployment numbers. So, this week was a tough week for unemployment. Um, I know how, you know how that make me feel. Just yeah. 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 No. Um, this week we had almost nine hundred thousand um, on a uh, first time um, unemployment um, insurance claims. Um, that was higher than what was ex- um, and expected. And um, yeah, I mean, actually, I think I talked on touched on this last week when I was like, you know, the COVID nineteen numbers are rising. Um, one, so businesses are shutting back down. Like I said, told y'all in, in California, we have shut back down. Um, we actually got an alert yesterday saying that all Bay Area counties are on the highest restriction. Um, and oh. then also, it's getting cold, right? And so, no one's going to eat outside. Like, it, it's too it's too cold for all that. Like, those little heaters is not enough. So, yeah. you know, you think about right. uh, the, 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 the restaurants, you think about the restaurants, um, and they have happening and it happening so i kind of knew this was you know going to happen right um we saw yeah, this so, right on the wall mm-hmm. yeah it's yeah um and then you know we go into the uh, earnings reports right and who hit and who missed um let's see so last week or last time i think we talked about blackberry shout out to lala they <laughs> beat okay mm-hmm. they, they they beat by three cents, but Ooh. go ahead. Um, General Mills, I'm a big cereal eater, so y'all hey, know listen, I know we about. Want that, you want that seventy thirty plan? You want to eat all the cereal <laughs> you need to? Okay, facts. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> boom. We can only get them when they on sale because cereal cereal is expensive. I didn't know that until I grew up, and I was like. Whoa, no wonder my mama, you know, she ain't stock up on the stereo, so she got that Listen, little off brand stereo. Get the four for 10 sale. Come on, get the four for 10 sale, okay? <laughs> um, FedEx, <laughs> FedEx Beat, which was, okay, that makes sense. We're doing a lot of shopping, um, online shopping. Um, the package got to get sent, and FedEx is, you know, one of those major players um, in that in that business. Um, okay. Let's see. Darden Restaurants, which owns Olive Garden, Longhorn, Steakhouse, um, and Yard House. Mm-hmm. Red Lobster, too. They own Red Lobster. Who owns Sizzlers? Sizzlers? 
they still they're open. still in business. Yes, they are. Um, I haven't seen one in a minute. Child. One. I'm sure they have them, though, right? I, Oh, I have one. There's there's one by my house. <laughs> there's one by my house. I don't go in. I've never. I haven't been in there in years. But anyways, um, um, so yeah, Darden restaurants. They they beat. Um, and actually, I did see in the news that Taylor Swift had shot out uh, Olive Garden, which is uh, one of the restaurants that this uh, bigger company owns. And she mm -hmm. shot them out in a song and she, you know, she was seen carrying an Olive Garden bag. Um, so, yeah, just interesting. Okay. Sizzler, and Sizzler okay. is owned by Collin Foods Internationals. You said who? They're owned by Collins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S, Foods International. Who, Sizzler? Yeah. Out of, they're based out of Culver City in Cali. Oh, well, that's why I see them. Or seen one. Um, and then also touch upon Nike. They beat, um, Nike has been blowing it out the park uh, this year. Mm -hmm. um, they, I really love their 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 website. Um, I love it. And, they, said, and, they, said you know, that, they said that when um, the pandemic hit, when they did their earnest call, um, that they were about to blow up their e-commerce. Yeah, and it well, shows. They're a strong company, like even brand wise, they're strong. Absolutely. So I could see them doing big things continuing past uh, 2020 as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, without a doubt. You know, I'm and I for... really didn't think people would be shopping on Nike, like there's nowhere to go. I know I've cut down on my shoes or purchase my shoe purchases. So I'm just like, who's still buying shoes? But it's, you know, like you said, Nike owns more, they just, they do more than just shoes. And um, you know that Pel Peloton is going up, right? Yeah. Okay. Icon Fitness, who is a private company? I'm waiting for them to go public. I'm waiting for Icon Fitness. Wait, what company? Icon? What'd you say? Icon Fitness. Uh huh. Okay. They're based out of um, Utah. They own Nordic Track. They mm -hmm. own a lot of um, like the iFit um, mobile apps for like workout. People working out in the house, child. They got to get oh, yeah. the gear. Yeah. I, well, I kind of fell off working out, honestly. I fell off. I started strong. I, and we're not, fell even, off. not even going to talk about this COVID. I'm going to get now. back, though. I'm going to get back. <laughs> <laughs> 2021, 2021 resolution, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Freshly fixed <laughs> COVID 30. Child, is. Mine's oh. been hit until this last, this last few months. I ain't going to lie. I was doing good at the top of the year, mid year, still doing good. But these last couple of months, when I get to the holiday season, mm -hmm. it's just a wrap. It's just a wrap. So, yeah, but since we're on that. fitness, yeah. since we're on fitness, let's talk about Apple. Yes, let's talk about it. You know, let's these workouts, I haven't tried it yet, but I was looking at it. You, oh, I, okay, I, I, like, well, I got the watch. notification on my phone, I mean, on my watch, which is mm -hmm. over there. Um, but yeah, Apple, Apple just released a new fitness service. Uh, and it's just another way that Apple continues to do great and monetize off their products, right? Mm -hmm. And without needing the iPhone, which is key, they're pulling Dang. us away from that. Yeah. You know? So all you Android so folks, all those Samsung and Highwood subscribers, <laughs> you don't need an iPhone. Get into are y'all going to? Are you going to try the um, the workouts that they have? I am. For the fitness? I mean, yeah. Okay. I say it I now, am. of course. Yeah, I looked at it last night with Mark. Like it, he put it up on the screen, and I like got mm -hmm. a feel for what they have to offer. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as like going the distance and like putting on the shoes, lacing up the Nikes, <laughs> I didn't do that part. I was sitting <laughs> on the couch, like, okay, that's nice. We gonna save it for best, next year. I the, yeah, I had the best workouts. Imagine it in my head, like, oh yes, girl, <laughs> push it, do the extra mile. Okay, do the extra ten squats. You got this. Got this. You got to visualize not... first. You know, it's all about mind, mind, yes, body, you know, mind sight. You know, <laughs> and then do it. They did a smart job of releasing it now because, as we know, everyone has that that New Year resolution and mm -hmm. always on the top of everybody's list is getting in shape. So, you know, yes. Apple, Apple, they smart. They, 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 little Timmy, 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 smart. Timmy, smart. But plus the bundling, though, y'all. The yes, bundling, the Apple one for real. Yes, mm -hmm. like when I saw like the bundled packages, it, I actually am saving money. Um, and then the way that they do the fitness and the different plans, like I had to pay for the twenty nine ninety whatever 
a month okay. versus whatever I was paying before. Uh, because I was like, well, I probably should get the fitness, but then I also want to make sure I have the news. The other stuff, well, I do like the cloud, but the other stuff I don't really care about. There's like gaming, I don't game. So, but it's like, yeah. those are yeah. the extra things, you know? Yeah, so. I don't care about that. Yeah. But hey, I, I might now. <laughs> might you never know. <laughs> you never know. They they got a they they got a good way of uh introducing you to stuff that you didn't think you needed. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden you like Dang, you I just it. Got, <laughs> Yep. That was me and my um and my watch. My mom got it got, uh bought it for me as a gift. And I'm like, I definitely would not have bought this myself. And then now though, I feel naked without my watch. You don't it's, have it, right? Yeah. How's your How's your battery life, though? My battery life is good on the watch. My the Air do you charge yours every Do you charge yours every night? No. Or I, think, it, okay. I feel like it dies. Like I didn't charge it last night, but I charged uh-huh. it midday, so it's still lasting. But I know by the time we get off uh, this, okay. I will probably have to recharge it. It doesn't hold the charge long, and maybe I need to like cut out some apps or something. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe because yeah. I spent 11 hours in the bathroom when I'm taking a shower. That's what I charge up on my watch on it. I be like, my stuff don't never die. I'm always good. Okay, let me let me switch up my life then. <laughs> I I charge mine overnight, so and I usually can go a full day. You might okay. got a lot of stuff going on in your background. You I think know you're talking about those is. group chats. You get notifications on your watch of the the messages. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I need to stop that too. Oh, mm-hmm. look, it's dying right now, y'all. As we exactly <laughs> group chat going off. Um, mm-hmm. but yes, yeah, a little tad bit on Apple. Um, Tesla. I feel like we cannot not talk about Tesla, oh. especially being in the Bay Area. Let's talk about Tesla. Let's talk about Tesla. Talk about Tesla y'all. This was the week. Yesterday, Friday was the day for Tesla mm-hmm. to be added into the S and P index, mm-hmm. and it was a lot of volatility like i sat there the last couple of minutes of the close um or before the close of the market and it was just those numbers were moving moving yeah, it started like, off oh, like uh, yeah go ahead no go ahead go ahead it started off i don't know what i started off at but at one point it was like 105 million shares or, or volume and then Blink of an eye, it was at 175. And I think it closed at what a volume of 222 million um shares being traded. Keep in mind the 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 average, the weekly average or 10 or 10 day um two week average is like 53 million. So it is a lot going on. And a I don't lot. know, Jolyn, if you want to go ahead and dive, deep dive into well. it. Yeah, so during that, you know, five minute mark, um, a lot of indexes were like the whole plan was, okay, we, this is the indexes, they're like, we're not going to purchase until close. And that was the best way for tracking purposes. Um, Because a lot of it was that last five minutes that was dark pull money, um, meaning that they, they are kind of like, kind of like, not necessarily off the books, but they they're the one, they're those institutions that buy like large amounts. So you think of all the like indices and things like that. And so that last five minutes, well, you can look at the chart and it's like a dip and then it just takes off. Um, So it was, when I looked at it, I saw 87 million. Mm -hmm. And then I saw um, 172 million. Um, And then across different sites, the closing price looked different. So on Mm -hmm. one side, I saw 676 and another one I saw 695. And I'm like, oh, there it's going to take a minute before it settles off. So even Mm -hmm. still, I think we're not going to see like the real impact of it Mm -hmm. until Monday. Yeah. I mean, at least in your individual accounts, because my account shows um, like a a negative for the day Mm -hmm. as far as gains go. But if the price went up, like yeah i'm like what's going on <laughs> right right ina i need answers asap <laughs> um so on monday i think that it will settle um but i still think there's going to be volatility because like what about you know sellers yeah taking um, profit mm-hmm. so are are you all in tesla, Is tesla exposure? i'm in tesla i, ain't I mean xly you know eventually but okay, okay. I had a plan of doing a leverage play with ARKK. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And then I got busy at work and I was just like, and it had ran up in the after hours. And I was like, wow. Um, and oh. it, it continued to run. So I never was able to, 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 to put that play into motion. But um, I do have an XLY. Uh, I had a 2022 before the leverage play. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for that. And then I do have uh, the leverage play. Um, so I have shares. You know what? I do have shares. Um, I have one in my four. I have four in my 457B and then I have four in my regular brokerage. So I do, I do have Tesla. I do have Tesla. Yeah, Tesla's that one, man. I was, I saw some article, um, I think, I think the guy was like in the UK. No, it wasn't the UK. It was somewhere over here. Um, and it was Don't about him off. becoming a millionaire yeah. just from mm -hmm. Tesla alone. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. that's lit. So it's like, we're, at this point, it's like, yo, if you can't afford those contracts, which I think one contract is, like the lowest I think I saw at like a 700 strike um, was uh, maybe 22,000 ah. for one. Yeah. That's so crazy. Exactly. You can't do that. That's like, air, KK, KK, my that blood. I got in but and got like, out. Okay, making moves, getting in, getting out. Oh, <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. But no, Tesla, I like, I. I didn't even care about Tesla prior to being in the stock market. Like I see them all the time, you know, mm -hmm. everywhere. Oh, being they're, in the Bay Area, yeah. Yeah, they're regular cars. Like they're I'm like, eh, mm -hmm. eh, regular one day cars? I'll get one. Because you see them so oh, regular. Ain't and regular that, no, about I know, no Tesla. I know. How you gonna talk they, about my it stock ain't a Toyota. Like it ain't a Toyota. I know. Toyota. I know. It ain't, my it ain't crush, no Toyota. <laughs> it ain't no Toyota. I know. But when you see them so much, it's just like, you know, just another car. Then you get into the stock market. Wait, let me. Me, then you get into the stock yeah, market and you up. hear clean about up. Tesla, the business. Mm -hmm. It ain't just another car. Okay. I understand that. Um, but yeah. And so again, you would think that I, when I started investing, you would think I'll start with the things that I know. It wasn't Tesla. And Tesla was so cheap back in the day. day. And when I say back in the day, I just mean a few months ago. A few months ago. Right. <laughs> Even it when, was cheap back then. <laughs> it, it was so cheap. Even when um, it ran up a little bit, I remember it had to be in April or May. Elon was like, we're overvalued and the stock dropped. And I'm like, I should get in. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. And then it just rose right back up. Like his little comment was like, oh, oh, the investor was like, whoa, 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 whoa. But it yeah, continued it, to go back it had up. Hit, it had hit, what, seven, I think, around that time. Yeah. And then it, it had went back down. Mm-hmm. Because I was just starting to like really understand like uh, the true assessment of business and really mm -hmm. how I like to get in and like get out. And I was like, oh my God. But yeah. I, something just said, just hold it. And I just held it, held it, held it for the split. It split. And then by that time, you know, I was part of the, the one contract gang. Then I had like hey. 10 contract gang. And I was like, boom. Oh. Oh, hey, graduation. Oh. Hey. Okay. Yeah, that's lit. Hey. Y'all, how do you Going feel about Tesla um, his valuation right now, though? I think they're still undervalued. Oh. Jolene, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I Honestly, I agree with you right now. Um, Like I said, according to um, my broker's account, it was at six ninety five dollars closing. Mm -hmm. um, I am not mad at it at all for my share-wise. Share um. I'm up like 45%. So I am not mad at it. I don't have no Tesla contracts right now. Like I said, them contracts was looking too, too. I was like, oh, no, can't do this. Yeah, I'm they mortgage off the house for us. Uh, they up there, <laughs> they're gotta, up there. Gotta slow my roll. Yeah, I said, I, I'll, you know, there were some other plays I could get into, but yeah, I, listen. I mean, as far All as I'm valuation, I'm, I said, as far as valuation, mm -hmm. I don't know. I know. I don't know. No. I, I honestly don't know. I, Let me I, just I, tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, because you know, Tesla is my stock crush. And it took a minute um, before we like, you know, quote unquote, went public, you know, because mm -hmm. I was still dealing with SMH at the time. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we, we had to break up, girl. We had to break up so I can get with, uh, with Tesla. And I have been so happy. Every, I mean, we are just living life, y'all, like living life. But even still, Tesla right now, 
there's so many things that are coming down the pike that are not um, taken into account mm-hmm. for Tesla. Like even with y'all, if they if they get this robo taxi um, life together, if that actually yes. is a thing and they start it, just the amount of um, profit they can make from that alone. Mm-hmm. This this what is that right now six ninety five that's a bargain, yeah. All the contract prices is a bargain. This stock is on a trajectory to um, go even further than that. See, and no, my thing is, is I still need um, what still need to do my research on how to evaluate mm-hmm. because I, Tesla has run up, mm-hmm. you know based off just news and so I don't know how much of that run-up is or how much of what they can do is already factored in um but that's all short term though the new stuff that's all short term like Mm -hmm. think about travel to the future and think about the company that Tesla will be you know two to three years from now Mm -hmm. where will they dominate like they're they have shown signs of where they're dominating right now Mm -hmm. um but think further out and think about where they will dominate you know, for like in five years or in 10 years, um, you already know that that domination, what that domination looks like, they've already left clues. So we know, um, I mean, obviously in the EV market, they have cutting edge battery technology, Mm -hmm. uh, the robo taxi, uh, full Mm self-driving, all of those things have not been accounted for, not its full potential yet like maybe like a little sliver of it but if you mm-hmm. count all those things all those catalysts add up and will push Absolutely. tesla's price forward so yeah. that's why i think it's not a bargain mention, now. Not, not, and not to mention how deteriorating the energy sector has been getting bombarded um and you know every time the world evolves and we have these mm-hmm. um what do you call it? Revolutions? Evolution? Like the industrial evolution? I like revolution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're right. Because this is, and it will be televised. It's going to be televised. <laughs> um, this industrial revolution that we're going through right now, where everything is, um, you know, evolving to this, I don't want to sound corny, but like this space age, the space age thing. Like literally, we're on the brink of that Jetsons world right yeah so just we are miss angel when like people really don't because uh, there are but i would probably say there's two people that look at tesla as being a conglomerate company as opposed to eight people who look yeah. at it as oh that's just that ev company right tell you something between the boring company of tesla mm-hmm. when you think about the evolution of how cities are going to become automated mm-hmm. right yep. Um, the technology that's going to be needed to move these cities to still have life to progress through it, Tesla is going to be right there at the forefront. Yeah. Energy conservation, energy generation, energy storage. Child, I told you my next house is going to have the Tesla roof that's going to be powered by Tesla with my Tesla in the driveway. Okay. Imagine a whole city. going to be in the living room. Yeah, a whole city. By, like a giga city. Um, I read somewhere. Wait, I got like a someone, one of my. Um, one of my friends sent me something about Tesla uh, testing out a, potentially a giga city in Vegas. So I need to look further into that, but could you all imagine? Like, yeah. Right what? by the town, <laughs> right by the you town know, on the and I'm, it's, I'm scared. Why? Like, we're really, I don't know, it's so crazy. We're really living in the future. Like the future is here. Like. You watch all these five movies and you're like, oh, look, a flying car. Like, oh, yeah, all that. Like, you know, smart houses. And, like, we're here. Like, well, we don't have far, like, flying cars yet. But, like, we're that, we're that close. Like, cars are going to be driving themselves pretty soon. And, um, whew, this is a lot, y'all. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I just, I'm just, my, my bonnet is still blown, like, that we're, here. Bonnet stays blown, right? <laughs> Bonnet stays blown, right? Like, exactly. um, but yeah, so that's Tesla. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm excited really too. Excited. I'm here for it. Yeah. I'm definitely here for it. I'm kind of scared though. I'm kind of scared. No, we about to be, be robots. We about to be robots. Girl. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> we about to be 
fucking robots, y'all. Like, we we yeah. gonna be, yeah. Okay. We're not um, be evil. That's what I'm scared about. Like, we, <laughs> I, I. I got, I got, I, I gotta go. I gotta go meditate about this. Meditate, <laughs> levitate, do what you gotta do, sis. <laughs> Come on, we put them in robots, okay? Um, no, but I had wanted to talk about um, the banks, mm. um, but then we started talking about Tesla, and and it's, it's much more interesting than the banks. But I'm just since I wrote out what I want to say or my little talking points, I did it the work. Mm. I'm, I'm a, I'm gonna share it with y'all. Um, okay. So. Um, Friday in the after hours, the feds, you know, loosen up their restrictions of allowing banks to participate in their uh, share buybacks um, and, you know, reissuing dividends. Back in mm-hmm. June, the feds was like, banks, y'all, uh uh-uh, uh, we gotta, no, y'all can't spend money and buy back y'all shares. Y'all can't pay out your, your shareholders with the dividends. Um, mm-hmm. And that was, that was in place because we didn't want, the banks to do what they did back in 07, right? And back then I was in high school, I didn't care about what was going on in the economy, but you know, I, I did my research and it was a hot mess in t- uh, 2007 up to 2010 with the whole, um, you know, the, the banks doing shady business with these mortgages and then the housing bubble, it was just, it was, it was bad. It wasn't just bad for the US, it was bad worldwide. Um, right. And then following that, um, President Obama, him and his team um, was like, we're going to change things around. We got to start regulating these banks because they were bailed out in trillions, with trillions of dollars. And it was, it was just like, okay, y'all did what y'all did. Y'all did y'all shady business, but you know, here's a stop on the wrist. Um, but Obama and his team was like, uh uh-uh, we're going to have to do some reforms. Um, and one of that was to, uh, one of the reasons was to protect the financial stability of the United States. Um, it was a hard time. I vaguely remember um, back in those days, um, again, I was in high school. So I really, again, was not paying attention. And it's crazy because I feel like that would have been a great time for schools to be teaching about stuff like that. It was, it was happening in real life. And I don't remember being taught about what was happening. Um, I think the only one of the only reasons why I do remember um, really remember it and, it and its impact is because I was I had a, a federal internship with Social Security Administration and the internship program got cut because it, it was hard times. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like that's the only reason why I really paid attention is because I lost my internship. <laughs> but um, wow. okay. But moving moving along, y'all, I, I made way. I, I was fresh out of high school, so it was just like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so moving along, um, one of the things that came out of the whole reform was um, the feds conducting these stress tests on banks and making sure that they're in good condition to, you know, to, to operate. Um, so they did a stress test back in June and um, they seen that banks, you know, need to slow down on their spending and again, restricted them from buying, uh, participating in purchase um, a share buybacks and dividends. But they did a new or a, another stress test and they realized that the banks have been more responsible. Um, they a lot of banks set billions and billions of dollars on the side um, just in case you know people weren't able to make their payments on their loans or whatever the case may be. Um, and also, again, they were restricted from spending money elsewhere. Um, with that being said, uh, they loosened up their restrictions, and now they're allowing some banks if they you know if they were able to make money these last three quarters. They're, if they were able to make money, they're now able to start buying back some of their shares and issuing dividends. Um, JP Morgan Chase immediately issued or announced that they was going to buy back $30 billion worth of shares. They wasted uh, no time, no time at all. Um, yeah. And the stock ran up a little bit in the after hours. And as we know, I got me some Chase. I got me some Chase, so I will be taking profits um, because I still think we do have a long way to go. Um, in the financial sector. So um, I'm actually decreasing my shares and putting that money aside for contracts anyway. Um, so I think this will be a good time to cut some of my Chase shares mm-hmm. and, and get it together for this QW. It's your heart a little bit, get rid of that it a little is, bit. It is, it is. It's very emotional. Um, and I was explaining to the TBD fam that um, we are 
a lot of us started investing this year and a lot of us started with shares. And although we know what those those contracts can do and how you know better the return on investment is, we still mm-hmm. have this emotional connection to our shares because that's what we started with. And right. it's hard having to cut chase, but listen, things gotta be done. I'm trying to give me a Tesla contract soon because Jolene's saying that it's still undervalued. So let me get in where I fit in. Things gotta get cut off by Chase. Um, so, but yeah. I mean, well, you know, there may be a potential dip though with Tesla. I mean, it better be. We're in unprecedented times. We're in the middle of a yeah. pandemic. Plus sure. um, this S- S- the S&P 500 like inclusion we don't know what's going to happen, you know, mm-hmm. as far as there, I think there may be like a little pullback and that's another thing I'm waiting for because I would love to get more Tesla um, options contracts. And at the same time, I'm like, well, let me see what's up with this dip action first. Um, yeah. So I'm still formulating what my end of year uh, plan is going to be for that. But I, man, I could talk about Tesla all day, so we don't, you know. <laughs> we can move on, girl. We can move on. We gonna move on. Okay, so we want to move on to Joe Lynn. Who is Joe Lynn? So this is your time because I don't want to just talk about the market. I want to talk about Joe Lynn as the person, not not just the investor. You know, we do know that Miss Joe Lynn is co-producer of uh, the come up series um mm-hmm. as y'all have heard we have talked about options and contracts y'all i know someone asked uh us to do to talk about it i'm not i'm gonna leave that to the come up series y'all go catch Period. the come up series on youtube okay um mm-hmm. they got a ig page at that come up series um but jolene and mr mark monroe does a great job of thank you teaching us about contracts and options. So I'm gonna leave it to the professionals and send y'all to that way. Um, But I know that you have your own show, but we wanna hear and uh, you know, some of the things that you probably will say, you probably have already said in your show, but still wanna ask you more about yourself, Miss JoLynn GC. So who is JoLynn? Yo, um, JoLynn GC, who am I? So. Just background wise, I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington. Um, I am an artist, um, a former attorney. I retired in back in 2015, um, and I was a criminal prosecuting attorney at that. And um, I left that profession during my last rotation, which was in juvie. And I left it because. Um, the kids were either new, I was connected to them in some way, shape or form. <laughs> so either they were from my neighborhood or I knew their parents or just something, you know? And I remember being in the elevator and this little girl, little cute little black girl, she tugs on my, um, on my blazer jacket. And she just looks up, up at me and she goes, she asked me, she goes, are you my brother's attorney? And I looked down at her, like, who's tugging on me? I looked down. And in that moment, I was, I came to the realization, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not, like, I'm probably the one that's going to put your brother away. I didn't say that to her, but Mm. that stuck with me. Um, And do you know that day I left? Oh, wow. I packed up my stuff and I took a month off. Um, I had a whole bunch of vacation because back then I was working ridiculous hours. I practically lived at the office. Um, I remember um, having like up to like 80 hours a week um, and that's wild. Uh, And so I took a month off and when I came back, I knew for sure that I was, that I was going to be done, that I was going to leave. And I stayed for about three more months because I needed to, you know, I didn't plan properly. I needed to save some money. Um, and then after that, I like had my exit date. Um, it was actually September 19th. <laughs> like I know the date now. I still remember the date. Wow. I didn't, I only told one other person and it was a complete surprise when I was leaving. Um, and during that month off, I would just go to the beach and, with my little sister's uh, chihuahua. 
<laughs> so, R- RIP Twinkle. Um, and I would just sit on the beach and journal because I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I had spent all this money on law school um, and I was trying, I was really trying to figure out what am I going to do. And during that time, um, I reconnected with art. My whole family is artistic um, in various ways, whether that's music or um, visual arts um, or both. So I, I painted and I remember one of the paintings I painted, I entered it into like this uh, group exhibition and I was in Panama with my husband at the time and my mom called me and I'm like, oh my gosh, something must have happened. Why is she calling me? And she was calling to tell me that one of my paintings won an award. And so I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, maybe I still got the juice in this art game. Um, what was the painting of? Oh, the painting, it was this um, like abstract painting um, called, what was it called? Limbs on a Wind. It was mm. whimsical trees and people were digging it apparently. <laughs> you know? so, um, I've, I still, my mom has the original, but I've sold several different prints of that. Um, it's no longer in print production, but my mom like has the original uh, because that was, I, you know, I, that was the first one that led me onto this journey with art. But then I started seeing the inequities in art because I still had on my, my uh, lawyer head. I hadn't retired until 2015. Um, so during this time, this was like 20, 2012 or so. Um, and I just, I, one thing I noticed that uh, a lot of my, fr- my art friends had in common, we were black emerging artists without gallery representation. And we were receiving um, like feedback from uh, you know, maybe different opportunities we had tried to pursue. And when we didn't get those, I would ask for feedback. And the feedback that I got one time, which now I consider the best feedback I ever got, but at the time I was like upset. Um, I was told that my artwork was too, uh, was too ethnic and not mm-hmm. mainstream enough. Mm-hmm. I, at that mm-hmm. point I had transitioned from doing kind of like abstract, um, like landscape or whatever to black figurative art and that's what I was told and I was talking to some of my other art friends and they were told similar things and I was like oh this this is a structural issue here this is Uh an institutional issue Uh and then from that point um I got this idea to um build this uh to build like to leverage technology uh Uh and I don't have a tech background just you know have a vision um, so to, I got this idea to leverage technology to remedy those inequities in the arts for Black artists. That's how it all initially started. Um, but fast forward to now, um, it's, it's now a tech startup um, and we are looking to change like the whole entire like art, the, the entire art game, like how an artist, uh, art, how their artwork is experienced mm-hmm. and there will be no need for um, the middleman of galleries. That's okay. awesome because I have a daughter that's in the University okay. of Arts as illustration in some major. So she'll let Oh, that's dope. <laughs> that is dope. Yeah. Well, so you just disrupted like. stuff. You're disrupting stuff now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So how, how was it walking away? I mean, you, you touched on it. But like, what what were your feelings like? Were you because you said you know, well, I feel like we're raised or generally speaking, we're raised to go to school, you know, mm-hmm. go to school, go start your career and do that for the rest of your life. What mm-hmm. was that feeling? But you also said that you're, you come from a very artistic family, so mm-hmm. maybe your upbringing was a little different, and they were like, you know, follow your dreams if you want to be an artist, do that. But what were your some of your feelings knowing that you had this? You know, you went to school, you paid all this money for your law degree, and, you know, you were just like, nah, it ain't for me, and stepping into the unknown. Yeah, um, well, one, after I left the prosecutor's office, I was still practicing law. Um, Mm -hmm. I just was, I think I was was in um, entertainment law, which is, it's just contracts and negotiation, and I can run my mouth all day about that kind of stuff. (laughs) Um, And it was, it was easy, you know, like it paid well, and it was easy but it wasn't fulfilling. Um, and my mom was my biggest supporter. Um, my mom really, she was the one, like she was the main person that 
supported me um, <laughs> far, like in multiple ways. Uh, she just wanted me to, to be happy. Uh -huh. She wasn't attached to me being an attorney, which I think was key because I had, a, I had not a lot, but I had some people um, in like my family that they just couldn't believe it you know, because they were so used to saying my niece or my cousin or whatever, <laughs> the attorney. And it's just like being an attorney is a function. It's something I can do. It's, but I'm me, like, that's not right. just who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and so my mom, like I said, was like very um, encouraging, but it took me some time to like figure out what it was that I wanted to do. Um, and even still, I feel like I walked away from that not having all the answers and yeah. mainly that came from I wasn't willing to I wasn't willing to compromise on my joy I wasn't willing to compromise on what brought me joy for money because all throughout my life I saw multiple ways I've always been entrepreneurial so multiple times throughout life I would uh I mean I always had like some type of some type of side hustle or whatever <laughs> um, gotcha. mm -hmm. In college, I threw parties, made a ridiculous amount of money, and just mm -hmm. kicked it. And I make I threw like the kind of college parties that would bring all of the surrounding colleges to one location on the weekends. Wow. Big, big, big parties, big parties. Oh yeah. Oh, it you always thought big. Oh, you always thought big. Down. And then in high school, I remember <laughs> one of my one of my like little businesses I had in high school. Um, I remember I cut up like one of my mom's uh, Christmas wreaths. And through some like, I think I tied on like some red berries or something like that. And girl, I was selling mistletoe. Okay, for one dollar, and everybody wanted some mistletoe. Listen, whatever you okay. got to do, right? Whatever right. You yeah. Have to do. So okay. I had support in 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 the transition, um, and mainly my mom. Like I really just cared about what my mom thought. Cause you know, yeah. she was the one who helped like with the majority of these law school bills, you know, mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want you to think that it was a bad investment. And she's just like, right. no, she was the one key thing that she said to me, she said, um, you don't have to do, uh, what did she say? She said, you don't have to do anything more. She's like, you could sit down and I would still support you. I was like, oh, okay. That's but obviously I'm not going to just sit, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, right. So I just... I, it went from trying to make my mom happy to what's gonna what's gonna bring me joy, mm -hmm. and my mom supported me in that. My husband supported me in that, and um, yeah, so that's like one of my first principles. If it doesn't bring me joy, I'm not with it. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. It's not worth that's it. That's beautiful to have support. That's beautiful. Yeah, I know. Lala was talking about walking away, and then and I'm just getting started, so I'm like, that has never been something I thought about. Um, I honestly has, you know, I'm, when I talk to people, I'm like, well, I got another 30 more years to put in because I do work for government. So, you know, you have to be a certain age and you have to have, um, have worked a certain amount of years to get that retirement. Mm -hmm. Um, and so walking away has never been something that I've really thought about up until recently. Um, and it, I, I, I guess I'm scary because I'm scared of that too. Um, I'm scared of scared not the unknown. The unknown. I mm. like having things planned out. I like I and I like I do like what I do. Although sometimes people are annoying, I do like what I do. Um, and I like having that routine. Um, yeah. And so you know that's, that's my struggle. That's my you know, I struggle with that. With what? But I'm gonna tell you because you know we have very similar ways. So you know I I yes. do like yes. that structure, but I think. Um, I've been talking about it a lot more only because I just feel like, um, I truly am tired of working for someone else mm -hmm. and it's very, I don't believe in coincidences, right? The other day, my mom just texted me out the blue. Um, I actually put this in my stories. My mom just texted me out the blue and she's like, um, Hey, you know, just, you know, it was just like a check-in text or whatever. And I was like, um, yeah, I'm still working. I think it might have been like maybe quarter to six or something like that. And she was like, hang in there, 10, 10 more. I was like, no, it's more like 10 more weeks. Even better, more like 10 more days. The hell? Mm -hmm. I don't got 10 more years in me. I don't mm -hmm. got it. I don't got it. And Kels, to your point, what you were saying about 
that fear. I do, I get, um, it's almost like butterflies. Like every mm. time, like I think about sending that, hey, guess what? I ain't coming in no more. Um, <laughs> but it's like, I have to believe in me mm-hmm. to know I can still take care of my family. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And, um, you know, because just like what you were saying, she she's like, well, you know, what about the medical? And what about this? And what about that? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I think you kind of forget, like, I have adults. My son is 26 and my daughter is 18. Now, granted, my daughter is in college, but her tuition is provided for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's really not nothing I got to worry about day to day. Like, oh, my God, how am I? You know what I'm saying? Um, I just got to. And I think one day going to be very soon. <laughs> it's going to be. Um, yeah, I'm not doing this no more because I, I, I don't get any fulfillment, any uh-huh. joy out of it. I do get fulfillment and joy when I research in businesses when I'm finding my exact entry point, when I'm executing mm. a plan, and then I can look and see my progression. And I see like my weeks, I see this, I see that. Now, mm. I'm not saying every move that I made in the market made me gains by no means. No, 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 no. But when I did take an L, I learned something from it. You know what I'm saying? Like I've learned from it and I readapted my strategy and went back in to fulfill it. So, Jolene, when you were saying, like, your mom was your support, you know, your husband was support, I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't imagine. That probably just, like, propelled you even more. And even when she told you, you don't have to do anything more but sit down, even though you knew in your heart, like, you weren't going to not do anything. You were going to move. But just to have those words, oh, my God, I'm getting emotional. Even like I'm trying not to cry. (laughs) I know. To um, Water work. It's like... Okay, I could do this. Mm-hmm. When you have that support, okay. I don't Girl, I have, I'm a sympathetic <laughs> crier, so I'll see something I and ask questions <laughs> after the fact. Like, why and this is this? why I'm so grateful for this episode because mm-hmm. Lala, from the very beginning, when you, so I met you through Trapper, um, and I was like, wow, she knows her stuff. And then when I met you, I'm like, dang we just alike like you know and i i admired everything about you because we we gosh i'm kind of because we were just alike and so we vibed instantly Mm -hmm. and then jolene and when you came up to the scene i was just like oh wow i love her like already and i guess your personality and it's your confidence is just it's so refreshing especially stepping into something that i did not know about right um Mm -hmm. i I mean i knew this year I'm new too. November yeah, 26, but, 2018. Like, I know two years. That we're not but, far apart, sis. No, it's not. No. Yeah, when I, I when I w- looked at her wealth ritual and she was saying, "Yeah, you know, my first trade was," I was like, "That wasn't that long ago." I'm like, it "Wasn't that I'm long like, ago?" And when I looked at that episode, that episode, I was like, "I can do this. I can do this." <laughs> Yo, it's crazy I because am test living living proof that you yeah. can do it because y'all know how much I started out with. And yeah, I share yeah. that amount, the nine thousand four hundred eighty-three dollars and twenty cents. Like I share that amount because I want people to know that it is possible. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. this is not a game. Like it's this not. right here, and I feel you on, um, Kels. I feel you on that that fear. Mm-hmm. But when when those numbers add up now, I know when they <laughs> have added, added up. up. They have added up. Like I'm in triple digits returns since September, right? And I'm just like, this is really real. Like, it's really real. And it, um, mm-hmm. the stock market was introduced to me about six years ago. I actually have, went out and bought um, Bill, um, um, Benjamin Graham's The Intelligent Investor. I picked up that book at 22 years old. And mm-hmm. I don't know if I even read through the first chapter, but I put it back now and I was like, eh, okay. And the person I was talking to me about it was, he didn't look like me. First of all, it was a he, and he didn't look like me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it kind of just went one ear out the other. Coming into 2022 and all of its craziness, you know, I've met people who look like me and who talk like me, who have had success in the market. And now 
I'm even more drawn to it. And then I'm meeting you and I'm meeting Lala. And, it's, and so it's just like, I'm, I'm scared, but I'm excited. I, I, I don't know that, I don't like not knowing the unknown, if that makes sense. I don't like the unknown. But uh, I've seen I, so I, much I, already. I mean, since meeting um, Jolene and Mark and Trap, like I've, I mean, three months of my first contract, triple, well, my first real contract. Lala, you you were talking about losses and stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm about to leeway to those losses. So my first contract was DraftKings. It was a weekly. Mm. And uh, I knew, I knew that uh, it was a risky play because DraftKings success this year is very, very dependent on COVID-19. Mm. And, and I got in, I bought me a weekly contract. I got in the week that the NBA season was starting. And I was like, oh, this, this, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me just go ahead and do a little Robin Hood, a little Trey girl. Okay, got me, got me a contract. Yeah, let me take same you, week. Take notes. That same week. Yeah. The same week. Let me take the notes. same week. It was like three players in a in a bay in, 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 in baseball tested positive for COVID. Boom. Drop mm. king just drops, drops. It was the same week that the NBA was supposed to start. And then yeah, it started, but it I lost money. I lost about a hundred dollars. Um Drop King did me dirty again recently. I, I had no business being in there. I You went back. You went I'm back stubborn. Tomorrow. You like Look. that toxic relationship, don't you? You like that toxicity, don't you? Don't y'all, y'all know you? Okay. Well, <laughs> listen, I'm a little, little wild child, okay? So I do like a little toxicity. I'm not here yet, y'all. I still drink with Tom, Trey, no chaser, okay? That's that's what y'all say. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, when he said oh. that, I'm like, I'm with you. No, but yeah, I went back for more in September at that, knowing, knowing mm-hmm. that September is the worst month for the market and uh i finally let it go this week at one point i was down 60 70 percent i got back up to being down 20 percent and i being greedy and i held on to it it dropped back down 40 percent so it came back up to 20 percent again and i was like okay 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 i'm out i'm out i'm out but jolene what has been one of your biggest losses and what did you learn from it Mm. in the um, stock market yeah so I gotta be honest with you um don't have that many losses to speak of um but I will say that my side stock crush or excuse me side stock bay NVIDIA has been the source or excuse me was the source of a lot of frustration um so I was in, let me see, I was in a 580 call for NVIDIA, which uh, just maybe, maybe it was like a couple weeks ago. I can't, I don't recall. Uh, no, it's been about almost three and a half weeks, I think, or maybe a month. Yo, time during the pandemic just, um, yeah. but that loss, so to speak, um, like hit me because I had believed in in NVIDIA. The thing with NVIDIA, and I still believe in in NVIDIA as far as like what I see them doing in the future, um, like when it comes to like um, being a big leader in AI. um, It was one of those things where it was just ahead of its time. Like for me, like our relationship, so to speak. (laughs) It was just too soon, you know, it was just too soon. I wasn't ready for NVIDIA, NVIDIA wasn't ready for me. They were underperforming uh, significantly and um, I had to let it go. And I needed a pivot because like I said, I don't, losses, no, mm-hmm. I can't do losses right now. Like I'm on, I'm on like, I, my account, like the way, the way that this is going, like I just, like I say, all chips, no dip, like don't mm-hmm. play with me. Mm-hmm. So I pivoted. Okay into you know what she said? Um, all chips no dip okay. right um i pivoted into xly it was that uh the xly play that everyone would be talking mm-hmm. about on the come up series 
and made my um, made that loss back like within wow. days. Um, and so with NVIDIA it was one of those things where one the one thing I learned that I have learned on this throughout all this is I don't I don't consider um, I don't really think about dollars um, because the money is inevitable and mm -hmm. actually the dollars are boring I'm telling you like making money can be boring because you already know it's going to happen and what is more fulfilling is um, potential impact um, who you can bless, um, like your performance, like your own metrics. So for me, I don't look at, uh, well, in that context, I don't look at the dollar figure amount lost or even the percentage when it comes to loss. It's like, Jillian, what did you learn from this? One, I had to go back because I document this whole journey, as you know, um, and I had to look back at my notes. And during the time that I initially got into that NVIDIA trade, which was, um, what was it at? It was, that was for 580. Cause I was in a 520 and I was in a 580. The 520 did way better than the 580. The 580 call was underperforming. And um, I went back in and it was FOMO driven. The reason why I got in that 580 is because I had felt like I missed an opportunity to kind of like um, go in more for that 520. And that was during the point where NVIDIA had went up like almost, it went almost to 600, almost. And then it just, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's been consolidating heavily, um, right. but it was FOMO driven. I was mm -hmm. like trying to get in and like, you know, do it big and NVIDIA wasn't ready to do it big. <laughs> and it's still ain't ready. It will be, <laughs> but it's just not it's right It's cooking. Now. Yeah, it's cooking. Exactly. So yeah, that was, so one of the main things is like, it's, I don't consider losses, losses. I consider them lessons. As long as I learn from it, I'm willing to not count it as a loss. So when you asked me, like, what was your, what was your loss? It was like, well, I already made that money back. Mm -hmm. So it's not a loss, mm -hmm. it's a lesson. So just as a wrap up, a summary, the things that I learned, one was obviously FOMO is not a strategy. And then two, um, have a pivot and counter as long as you learn from your lessons or learn from your losses mm -hmm. those are lessons so yeah nope i and i agree i was gonna ask you for your biggest loss and that that lesson learned um after that uh because <laughs> i feel like mark ain't no mark spoke about that in his benediction on friday or was it yeah i think it was friday it was a long time ago at this point i don't even know today no it was on wednesday i believe um and i feel like he was speaking to me um, when he was talking about the losses and lessons. Um, because like you said, like, I, I listen, I'm still counting dollars over here, right? And I took that loss and I'm like, that's another contract. I'm playing, I'm doing things I'm not supposed to be doing. No, I'm not supposed to be doing them. And that could have been a contract. Well, it could have been, it depends on what I was going to buy. Maybe an X or something, a little, little X, a little baby contract. But it's still a lesson learned and me having to stop being so stubborn as I am mm -hmm. as a tourist. I feel like I'm a tourist to a T. Again, I should not have been in it. <laughs> should not have been in it again. Um, and so again, like the, the lessons, it's, it's not it's not just the losses. What's, what's the lesson? Lesson is you got burned twice. Do your research. Yeah. You already already I already knew, I already did my research and yet I still did it. So it's also having it's being disciplined. Like you said, FOMO is not a strategy. Right. And I feel like starting off with this um, investing is we jump. A lot of us jumped in for the fear of missing out and not doing the proper research. Like some of my earlier stocks, we ain't gonna get into it. Um, I got in because I felt like I was gonna miss a come up, and as the come up series have shown me, there there are winners everywhere you just have to do your due diligence and do that research and and find them um and long term no weeklies no we oh yeah oh yeah no that part trust yeah. your gut yes minimum a year minimum and even that's kind of i like the two-year joints personally but you know. yeah um so I, i'm i'm learning i'm learning i'm learning um wait did you ask me the dollar amount no Okay. I mean, if you want to share I'll tell that, you if you want to know, I mean, I wasn't sure if you asked the dollar amount, so that 
that NVIDIA uh, FOMO strategy cost me 19000 Oh, Lord. No. <laughs> Wait, hold on, let me drink. But like that's I said, XLY. That's a, that's a, that's a semester that's a, in a quarter. Lord. That's a Tesla contract. I would have passed it out. Is. But the XLY on, in a matter of days. Yeah. Made that up. So it was just one of those things where I was like, okay. I'd rather just take this because I know it could get, mm -hmm. it could go more and I didn't, I didn't want to wait, but I knew that XLY um, was going to do its thing, especially yeah. since those contracts were below $2. Mm -hmm. So, and so I could buy like, you know, triple digit contracts and right. go ham. So yeah, that loss was, you know, I never told anybody, well, Mark knows, I never told anybody that, but yeah, it was 19,000. Um, and the funny thing about that 19,000, like that's, that's a blip on the radar. Um, yeah. Only because, con like, the way these option contracts work, <clears throat> y'all. That's yeah. all I can say is the way they work. I mean, <laughs> just based on this conversation, y'all, Jolene said she started two years ago with $9,000. $9,483.20. She talked today, she's talking about a $19,000 loss that. She's saying it's just, you know, it is what it is. And that she made back. Right. It was a blip on the radar. So you got that new man? It's different. It's different. Back. It's different. And I'm definitely one of those people who I have to see it. To, I have to see it for myself. Like you you telling me, okay, well, whatever. But yeah. I have to see it. And I'm I'm Absolutely. seeing and that's why I show I show people the good and the bad. Um well, let me tell you, there's good, there's good triple digit returns um, in less than three months. In less than three months. Like, it's, it's, it's real. Um, it is. But you, it, it's, it's crazy. So it's crazy. It, it, it really is. Um, but you said that um, Mark was the only person you told about this. What is something that mark doesn't know about you that no one else knows that you haven't showed or sh or told Ooh. about yourself damn i'm sure there's something um <laughs> <laughs> well i mean wealth wise you know i feel it like be anything. Knows, he knows everything so that's like <laughs> we talk a lot y'all <laughs> so I, I need some exclusive oh, yeah, I'm, trying exclusive to think. I'm, trying to think this. I'm trying to think um <laughs> season finale season finale uh uh dang i don't honestly i'm gonna dang you should have told me ahead of time because i gotta think about that <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know. I, I, I we don't do the ahead of time stuff but but i'll i'll save that question for when we come back and you do your 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 gift opening uh reveal so I'll, but I'll you know that. let me i i feel like i need to give y'all some season finale material <laughs> like, <what are> you <laughs> well, i mean i got another question uh -uh. okay i got another okay. question what is your wild card for 2023 oh you know i'm still in planning mode honestly um so i don't know about wild cards that i haven't established those but i will be heavy on tesla um i will be heavy on well and also um arc mm -hmm. um is it now Arc because of Tesla, or are there companies within Arc that you you know feel very 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 mm -hmm. confident and strongly of? Yeah, like you know Square, um, Invite. Um, what else do I feel really good about with ARKK? Um, I mean, definitely Tesla as well. Like I look at Arc as the okay, I want some Tesla exposure, but like, what if Tesla ain't doing it all? Like, let me kind of, you know, uh -huh. have more of a diverse um, approach to it. So like I said, I'm not finished um, writing out all of my, all of my uh, plans, my trading plan for um, this upcoming year and beyond, but I definitely am heavy on Tesla. Like I, and this, oh, this is something else I didn't share. Um, I'm about to do something really wild and I'm very risk adventurous, um, but I'm about to, I'm highly considering throwing everything 
in Tesla as a major scale play. Oh, wow. Well, everything in one account. I'm sorry. In one account. I'm sorry. Okay. Not all my accounts, but in one of my accounts. um, In one of my accounts. Um, And I was just talking to uh, Che, actually, about this. We've been talking about this all morning. Um, And I'm considering it. And that's something that I've only done that one time before, and it, but not like in a singular uh, ETF, or excuse me, in a, in a singular uh, stock option, or excuse me, options contract. Um, I've done that with XLK before. I took everything that I had, put it in XLK, that paid off, um, that was triple digit uh, returns. Uh, triple digit, that was like, yeah, triple digit returns. And I was happy I did it. I was proud of myself mm-hmm. for, stepping out um and you know me and mark we were celebrating and now i'm getting ready to do that with tesla that's how strongly i feel about um tesla and i mean even my feelings aside i just see what's up with tesla i see it now we're gonna see if you know everyone else catches up with that but i'm i want to bet big i i have plans and visions for uh for uh not just myself but for all of the um generations after me and it's like I can't I don't I can't let fear be the reason why I didn't do something Mm -hmm. you know I know that if I lost it all I can make it back I'm confident Mm -hmm. I learned those skills you know so if I got to you know, eat General Mills branded cereals for <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner to save that money. Um, to, you know, if I had lost it all, I would do it. I would do it in a heartbeat because I I know I've learned the skills to make money. I've learned the mm-hmm. skills to print money. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, but I'm still, you girl, in the back of my mind, I'm still thinking like, what is that one thing that Mark doesn't know? I tell him that, that, and that's why I asked. Lot. I'm like, I I know y'all are very close. And I'm like, he probably knows a lot, but it got to be something that there he does not yeah, know sure. about Joe Lynn. That I'm a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> my mystery. Yeah. yeah. I'll have, I'm going to continue to think about that, Kel. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll keep thinking about it. Okay. So, so okay. So, no wild cards for 2023, but any. Not score? yet. When I get them, when I get them, I'll tell you. I'll okay. tell you a wild card when I get it, but I'm still planning. Okay, uh, but that's, that's Tesla fair. Heavy. Tesla that's, heavy. Can you tell us how has it been for, how, how, how has it been? Is this your first year in the Matrix with Mark? Yes. How um, is it? Intense. It's intense. Yeah. It is intense. Um, now, here's the thing. It was one of those things where Mark has talked about like the way Mark thinks, I've been exposed to that, um, which is all, you know, Matrix vibes. But as far as being in the Matrix with him, like as the, and learning his thought process and how he thinks about things, this was the first time because he's never let anyone else in on it um, before. And so um, it was very intense. We're still not done. You know, we still have, what do you say, like over 120 companies to go through. Um, and we are on break right now, but we get back to that on the 26th. So I'm enjoying my little break, um, Mm -hmm. giving my brain a rest because it, it is like a, it's like nothing I've ever been in before, so to speak. Um, and it's, I've been documenting like how I approach it, um, just because I like to document like my own learning. It helps me, uh, think about things differently um and see like where else I can apply that same like yeah. approach but yeah it's been intense um very rigorous uh and mentally like by the end of the day you're just done mm-hmm. yeah by uh-huh. the end of the day, you're done because it's a lot of you spend a lot of time in the future yeah okay I, I mean I hope is is any of it being recorded? Like, will it be? I don't know. I'm seeing like a trailer of 
<laughs> a mad a mark being a madman and scientist and the whole I don't know I don't, like is any of it being recorded or no it's just it's just um, you gotta be there to see it no there are re- there is a recording of it but it is only for those that are in it now I will say that on um Tuesday and Thursday's episode and mainly Thursday's episode of the come up series um that episode, that Thursday episode called The Future is Bright, mm-hmm. uh, that we, Mark did like a mini matrix. Mm-hmm. Those, those three questions, those were mm-hmm. um, the three, like how you first start about you, you enter the matrix and you think about what happened in 2019 and 2020, which mm-hmm. is what he shared, you know, um, we did that. Um, and mm-hmm. then we rolled out everything that happened and then you start to think about um, what will be. And then after you think about what will be, based on what happened, what will be, then it's like, okay, well, if this is the vision of what will be, well, what are the companies that will be the leaders in that? And that's why I feel so strongly about Tesla. <laughs> Tesla, I already yep. was feeling strongly about Tesla, but now, um, you know, before Tesla was just my stock crush. We may be getting more serious, y'all. We'll just have to see. Because after being in the matrix and putting Tesla through that, uh, I see big things for Tesla and I'm willing to bet big. Oh. I'm willing to risk it all for Tesla. Okay, okay. That's me not too. like- Me you and Tesla. What'd you say? What'd me you say? Me and Tesla. Girl, there is so much, there's enough Tesla to go around. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, but she's Lala got a whole bunch of she got Timmy, she got who you got a lot. You got you no know, Apple. You, you don't be coming for my booze now. You, they you all have a lot. Have you have you have a lot. You have a lot. They all play their position equally. Okay. <laughs> equally? It's all equally weighted. I don't know. Not necessarily. There's one that's always on top. You know, he always he always <laughs> Well, I want to say thank you. Thank you to you both because again, I, I was when I first met you, I was like, we got Lala and TVD, we got Lieutenant Lala and TVD. Like, what? <laughs> like, I just appreciate your ability to break companies down. And um, it's been definitely a pleasure having you along with me during this journey. You may not have even knew that that's how I felt, but this is how I felt. And um, mm. y'all, my goodness, I am not a crybaby girl. I'm a gangster. I can't even cry on But I, 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 don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah, you know, and you know I'm the asshole of the group. Excuse my language, but you know I'm the asshole of the group, so I can't be getting emotional on here like this. Um, But no, I definitely appreciate you um, for everything that you've done, you know, whether it was one-on-one talks or you putting what you put in Trappers Anonymous, like, I was drawn by that, and then even more so drawn once I got to know you personally and how much we are so similar and then for Joe Lim I, I, I told you from the beginning I said you big sis I said I, I it ain't no cuzzle with me it's big sis because again I, I love the vibes I love the vibes and I love what you're doing um and I'm I'm just so excited for what the future brings for you and your bay and your side bay and your <laughs> Oh, all, of bays and all of them and you know what you're doing for the culture you and mark it's just it's i'm happy i'm happy and i'm i'm bringing people on board um i got my cousin into it. i got my sister into it my mom just gave me her fidelity account password so like i'm i wouldn't be where i'm at if it wasn't for you and mark so i definitely want to say thank you and i appreciate you both um and I did send y'all gifts. Lala, you already opened yours up. But <laughs> I'm gonna hit you up. I'm gonna hit you up. Yes, you gotta hit me up. Um, before we part, 
I want to ask you both, what is your advice, whether it's stock related or life career related, what is your advice to new investors, um, you know, young, old, people who look like us, specifically for people who look like us, what advice would you give them? My advice would be to <clears throat> not try to rush the process and also to while you are digesting the information, trust yourself, trust it. Because once you, once you apply it and you see it become, you know, life, you know, there's no limit to it. So, you know, what we talked about a little bit earlier about, you know, that walk away and having that fear of, you know, not having that same old routine, not having that same stability. Um, I can understand how it may make you feel, you know, uneasy, but once you do it with repetition, patience and consistency, it will come. I have seen it, I've lived it um, and, you know, I think for me, it's more so of, you know, Jolene, when you were telling your story about, you know, you not wanting to, um, not necessarily like let your mom down, but you wanted to, um, you know, tell her that the investment that she did in you with the law investment, you know, with law school wasn't, you know, totally in vain. And, it's more so of just proving it to yourself. Once you prove it to yourself, ain't no, ain't no limit. There's no limit, no one to stop you. So again, have patience, have consistency, trust your research. You know, the running theme of the come up series is stick to the grip, stick to the script. <laughs> I'm getting emotional, I'm going over my words. And it truly blows my mind um, because I was in the market prior to this year and I did have a financial advisor. So I did have guided paid help. Um, but once I came across Wall Street Trapper and just listening to him break down everything that I was taught in college, because when I was in college, finance was my major. Kels, we had this yes. <laughs> conversation. Yes. I was my major and I was sitting in those macro and micro and accounting classes like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't, what do you mean? Like, I couldn't understand any of that. But coming across him and him just being so relatable and just breaking it down, it, mm -hmm. it became easy. It became easy for me to dig into those companies and, you know what I'm saying, just, just blast through them. So at that point, once I realize and like I say I think that's just because by career orientation I'm a process analyst once I'm able to deep dive and figure out that business model and you know see where this is going and I could you know I my job is to look past today my job is to look into what the processes are today and how they're going to be implemented three years five years and ten years down the road so I can see and I see what the progress today and how it's going to multiply and tenfold. And that allows me to meet, that allows me to make good investment decisions. And with that knowledge, and then coming across the come up series, I mean, Mark and Jolene, you guys just, y'all just, you know, threw me down a, a oil mountain. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. So it was just like, oh my God. And I, I think I was more fearful and I had to take my own advice and just having the patience and being consistent. But once I started sticking to those one year, two years, and I started seeing those gains and I'm like, oh my God, this is real. I could do this. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I could do this. And if I probably had the overwhelming support, I probably would have been exited back probably September, October, but I was afraid, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I was like skeptical to leave. But like I said, my mama sent me that text the other day. I was like, 10 more, 10, who, who, who will be here for 10? <laughs> <laughs> you tripping, <laughs> you tripping. So Kels, TBD, 
means a lot. Each and every one of you have a special place in my heart. You know, I will go beyond. I would walk, you know, <laughs> for each of you. You know, we always just a, a drop in a bucket away. Anytime something's okay. going on, I'm always there. I don't care, you know, what's going on. Um, so I love you. And I love our TBDG family. I love you too. You know, we're creating um, to my cousins because I finally got in the come up group Facebook. (laughs) Love you guys too. Um, You know, so I I just love this change that I'm witnessing and I love being a part of it. It's Mm. it's very heart satisfying and heartwarming. Mm -hmm. It, it truly, uh, truly is. And thank you, Jolyn, for coming on today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been fun. You know, on Saturdays, as you know, the, the first lady of leisure, I'm chilling <laughs> on a Saturday. And yeah. <laughs> I am so glad that I, that you all invited me on. Um, and I just, besides being thankful that you all invited me on, I want to acknowledge the both of you um, for being a stand and being um, the physical representation of what could be possible for those that look like us. And I'm in particular, I'm talking about like the little girls Mm -hmm. when they come across this video and see four strong, beautiful black women in the market that is something, I mean, there's three of us on here. Mm-hmm. Where are you going to find that on a regular basis? And so right. the fact that you all take it upon yourself to do this weekly, to do this selflessly, and to provide a space that amplifies the voices of Black women is powerful. Because we sit here as Black women today and there are little black girls, little black and brown girls watching. Um, and for them to know and to see it, because, you know, Kels, you said earlier, you know, it's like, I got to see it first. Mm-hmm. We're here. Y'all are there. And I think about what it would, what it would have meant if I would have saw someone mm-hmm. that looked like me early on mm-hmm. in, in, in this um, investment world because y'all know it's mainly it's mainly the men mm-hmm. out here um and to have the courage to step out and do that is is powerful so I want to acknowledge you both as um as leaders in this movement wow and thank you <laughs> I encourage you both to um to really take that on and to step out not just for yourself and your family but do it for all of those coming after us. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel really strongly about that. Um, And, you know, that is why, uh, that is part of the reason why, why I wanted to to step out as well. I think about like, yo, if I didn't take that first step on November 26, 2018, I would not be here right now. We wouldn't be having this conversation. We wouldn't know each other. Right. You know, and also if there wasn't a pandemic, like the way the way that this has been orchestrated, 2020 has been bittersweet. And True. I'm choosing in this moment to focus on the sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, for new investors that are looking to start, the first thing I'll say is 2020 was an unprecedented year. Um, and so the things that work for 2020 may not work for 2021. And so do not go into 2021 with old tricks. It really will take the, the same, well, probably even more level of uh, diligence and research and being connected um, and being confident. One of the things that builds that confidence is the ability to talk to someone else, just to share mm-hmm. what you have learned. So if that means you got to do a group thread and in the morning, y'all talk about what happened in the market. That's why you all, in particular, are talking about what happened throughout the week in the market and talking about the earnings reports. It is more impactful than you may realize because it 
shows that we are out here, we are doing this given like our backgrounds, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't have a finance background um, at all. I'm, I'm an artist. I identify as a, as a creative before I identify as an investor. I'm not going to be the one that's out there, you know, leading 80 jillion different, you know, investors, whatever, investors 101 or whatever. That's not, that's not my vibe. Um, but I feel passionately about us getting into this market. You think about what was created in the early 1920s and also destroyed. You think about this unique opportunity that we have right now, um, because the way things are set up um, institutionally, it's not set up for us to win. We're not, if you look at it right now in this moment, right. we, the wealth gap alone is ridiculous in this moment. And the, the great equalizer, the thing that will um, propel us is for us to think in the future and get in the market. Those are the, the only two things that build wealth is being in the market and real estate. But there's a huge gap and disparity between real estate <laughs> and the market. It's actually the, the odds of you making money. You know, this might step on someone's toes. I don't care. <laughs> the odds of making money, it's like it is, the market it is. is going to um, do better. And you can, if you want to see that visually represented, go on Visual Capitalist com and find um, find the article about I don't remember the name of the article but there are different I think it's the graph some there's several different graphics that show you the difference between um, like real estate and uh, equities like having some type of ownership um, that comes from the market and so I would just say for for 2021 and beyond like get plugged in. Don't, you don't have to do this alone. We're, we're right. out here now. Yep. You know, we are yep. out here. Yep. And you don't have to be alone in this. This could be a collaborative thing. Like our people in general are a collaborative people anyway. Do this yes. technology all day, mm -hmm. all day long. So mm -hmm. don't do this. Don't fall for the okie doke of um, like American mainstream individualism. That's not for us. We are a communal people. We can do this together. There are so many people that have already started. And the fact that you all are here and we're having this conversation is just proof to that, it's testament to that. So again, like I always say, get in where you fit in <laughs> and plug in, you know, um, and do not be afraid to reach out mm -hmm. uh, when, when you need like assistance because the decision that you make today, right now in this moment, as people are watching this video right now, the decisions you make come Monday could set you up for the rest of your life. If I yep. didn't see this with my own account, I would I might not have believed it either, but I am telling you, <laughs> this options game has changed my entire life. It has changed my life. It has changed my husband's life. It will change, you know, when my twins get here, it will change our twins' life and generations after us. Do you know that I can literally do and have anything that I want, anything, and so can you. And it's one of those things where it's like, if you are gonna bet on anybody, bet on yourself first. Yes. Bet on yourself. This one decision to open up a brokerage account or open up your IRA or whatever can literally change your life. People talk about, you know, getting into the market, um, you know, and that's fine. Like getting into the market, buying a couple of sh shares here, getting the contract here. If you don't realize that this market, like investing is the key to your financial freedom. If you don't get that, then you will take those baby steps. We don't got time for that. Right, right. We can literally close the wealth gap wealth gap in a few years i'm not even playing like if all of us got into the market mm -hmm. do you realize how big how big of an impact we could have if we just got in like if we all just got into this and just went for it and in, in less than 10 years we can close that gap in less than 10 years we could start owning all kinds of things we could be building we could um like our ch children um could have the same type of um impact they wouldn't have to work like my twins, when my twins get here, 
the first words out of their mouth is W2 who, because they're not working for anybody <laughs> else. They're not. W2 who? Who's that, mommy? Right. I'm, when I say that, I'm like, I'm so serious. Like, this investment game is real. It is real. It, I've it only is. been here for two years, and my entire life is different. I'm sitting here chilling with y'all on a Saturday when before, my old life, I probably would have been working. I don't work. <laughs> I, all I do, like, I'm not even kidding you. I just get paid for the ideas that come out of here. That's it. That is it. The rest of the day, the rest of the time is mine. Mm -hmm. And that same vibe could be yours too. Because I, tell, I told Mark, a few years ago, I was like, look, I'm trying to work on my second retirement. What's up? What does that look like? And I'm here right now. Wow. It is possible. So, I mean, I can go on and on and on, but <laughs> bottom line is do not play yourself, okay? Yep. Do not financially play yourself. You better do what you got to do to get in this market. You have TBD, you have the come up series, you have everybody doing whatever they can to help us elevate. Now is the time. What is today? The 19th? Oh, today is my brother's birthday. Happy birthday, brother. Um, Happy birthday, is, brother. Uh, 20, <laughs> today is December 19th, 2020. Come Monday, make a plan to be in this market before 2020 gets here. Or make a plan to, to uh, be in the market the first quarter Make it put a date. Don't say one day. Don't say don't say someday. Those aren't days of the week, y'all. Pick a day. Say on a Tuesday, I'm entering the market. On a Wednesday, whatever day that is, do it. Because I Amen. honestly I don't know what's stopping you. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I would just say the, the last thing I'll say is let no thing stop you, not even yourself. Right. Thank just that you. Men mental. It is. And this is why I share for the, for the viewers, this is why I share, you know, my gains and my losses, because you have to see it and you, you have to see it. You, it's, you have to see it like these gains, like the losses that I've taken is because I'm doing stupid stuff. OK, I ain't doing stupid stuff. 2021. All right. I'm done. I'm done. But these wins, when you stick to the script as the leaders of the come up series will say, you stick to the script, it, you, oh my, the, the game changes, the game changes. And um, I know for a lot of us, we're, you know, we're scared to get into something that we're, we haven't talked about, like, you know, stock market, we don't talk about that in our community, but here we are, 2021, we're talking about it. So there's, there's really no excuse. Like there's really no excuse. And if you follow me and you, and you mess with me, hit me if you have any questions about you know well what's this what does this mean or you know how can I do x y and z hit me like I share everything you know I'm, and I feel like this year we definitely it is like you said it's been bittersweet is but I want to focus on the sweet sweet part we as a community have come together um in probably ways I've never seen before um and the support is there. We do support each other and we are supporting each other with this movement, with this journey. Um, and so honestly, it's no, you, you ain't got no excuse. You ain't got no excuse. You ain't got no excuse. So um, like Jolan said, get in where you fit in and you definitely have a place to fit in in the stock market, whether big budget or not, like there is places for you in the market. Um, so like, like she'll say, get in where you fit in. Um, again, I want to thank you, Jolan GC, for coming and blessing Market Bullies. Um, so I think this this is our season finale. I, I feel like, you know, you know, next <laughs> next week, the, the, the end of the year is closed. We closed closed business, and this was a great way to close out the show. Um, so again, Jolan, thank you for coming by on a Saturday morning. Oh, I'm with you. I. I'll probably still be asleep right now. Well, I'll probably just be waking up. So I appreciate um, you stopping by because it, it is the morning for us. Lala, it's the afternoon for you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't even want to get into what you be doing. You be turning up or whatever, whatever you may have had planned for today. Um, so again, yeah, thank you for... 
I'm thank you for a great season. Um, Lala, like I really appreciated um, doing this with you. Um, I feel like, as we say, it's real. Like this vibe that y'all see, it's real. It's not scripted. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the only thing I know to do is keep it real. And um, it has been a pleasure with you, or for, like, it has been a pleasure to have you alongside me um, as my co-host on Market Bullies. And we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what's, what, where, we, where we go. But that wow. has been it for Market Bullies, y'all. Again, um, please like and subscribe. I mean, if you don't like it, tell us what you don't like about it. Um, again, I, I do be in the comments. Uh, so, and I do reply, <laughs> <laughs> good and bad. Um, um, so, yeah. Um, again, if you haven't already done so, definitely go follow and subscribe the Come Up series on YouTube. On Instagram, it is that Come Up series. Um, you can go ahead and follow Jolene GC on um Instagram or I am and not no or and I am Mark Monroe um, on Instagram. They do have a uh, Facebook group. Um, they don't run it, um, but they, from what I hear, they are in there. They make guest appearances, um, and it's a whole community um, as well. So you 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 know you have you have resources. You have cousins out here all over. Ain't no excuses for 2021, period. Like, period. <laughs> like, none. Um, but we're going to close this out. Um, again, thank y'all for stopping by with us this week. Yes, Peace. thank you.